Walt Disney's Mary Poppins. Hello there, my name is Bert. I'm sort of a man about town. You might say, I do what suits me, sell kites, clean chimneys, or paint pictures on sidewalks. Today it suits me to be a one-man band. Why don't you come with me? London is a grand this time of year. Well now, here we are at Cherry Tree Lane, and over there is number 17, where the Banks family lives. Not too long ago, something very unusual and very wonderful happened at the Banks home. Let me tell you the story. Mr. Banks, you see, worked all day in a bank, and Mrs. Banks was always busy with climb, meetings, and such. So Jane and Michael, the bank's children, had to have a nanny, which is a person who looks after children. Jane and Michael had had several nannies, and on this particular day, the latest one had just left. Informing Mr. and Mrs. Mr. Banks that they have to find someone else to look after their little monsters. Jane and Michael weren't really naughty. The nanny simply misunderstood. She thought the children had run away from her when all they done was follow their kite. Constable Jones tried to explain when he brought the children home, but the nanny wouldn't listen. Now Mr. and Mrs. Banks had to find still another nanny. The way to do that was to place to advertisement in the newspaper, calling for, for, for someone firm and sensible. Jane and Michael, of course, had their own idea about the kind of person who should be their nanny, and to help their father, they wrote an and verstament for him. Wanted, a nanny, must have cherry dispassion, rosy cheeks, and be willing to play games. When Mr. Banks saw the children's and verstament, he called it to ridiculous nonsense. He tore it up, threw it in the fireplace, and wrote the and verstament himself. But late that night, a strange breeze blew down the bank's chimney and carried the pieces up into the night sky. The next morning, when Jane and Michael got up, the line of nannies they saw from their window stretched clear around the block. They were all waiting to be interviewed by Mr. Banks, and a firm and sensible lot they were, not a rosy cheek among them. Jane looked at the nannies' dismay. I don't understand, Michael. They're not what we want or what we adversed for at all. But just then a wind started blowing from the east. Down Cherry Tree Lane the east wind blew, growing stronger and stronger. Finally, it picked up all those firm and sensible nannies and blew them away, before Mr. Banks even knew they were there. Every last one of them was gone. Jane and Michael watched in glee from the nursery window, then riding toward them on the east wind. A person holding a black umbrella approached. Oh look, Michael, it's her, our nanny, rosy cheeks and everything. The rosy cheeked person landed on the doorstep of number 17. She properly marched in and said, Mr. Banks, I am the new nanny. And before Mr. Banks even knew what had happened, she slid up the banister to the nursery. My name is Mary Poppins, she said, taking off her coat and hat. Come along, children. We'll begin with a game called Let's Tidy Up the Nursery. Jane didn't like the sound of that. Are you sure it's a game, Mary Poppins? That depends on your point of view. You see, in every job that must be done, this is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap! The job's a game! Go down!
Mary Poppins snapped her fingers, and sure enough, let's tidy up the nursery, became a magical game. Toys put themselves away, beds made themselves, clothes hung themselves up, and soon the nursery was neat as a pin. The children were delighted. Mary Poppins, you're wonderful. Of course, and now you must get some sleep. Tomorrow we'll have an outing in the park. The next day, it suited me to be a sidewalk artist, and I was drawing pictures and chalk when I looked up and saw Mary Poppins and the children. You're lucky children indeed. When you're with Mary Poppins, magic just seems to happen. How about a bit of magic right now, Mary Poppins? No one's looking. Well, if we must, we must now line up and jump. Suddenly, we found ourselves inside one of my sidewalk pictures at a county fair. All four of us took a ride on a carousel, and then Mary Poppins rode her horse right off the carousel, and ours followed. We joined a fox hunt and entered a horse race. Oh, we had a jolly time. That evening, when Mary Poppins tucked the children in, Jane had a request. Oh, Mary Poppins, we had the most wonderful day. Promise you'll never leave us. That's a pie crust promise, easily made, easily broken. I shall stay until the wind changes. Now go to sleep. Tomorrow you are going on an outing with your father to the bank when he works. Jane and Michael were surprised. Really? Father has never taken us anywhere before. Indeed, he hadn't been too pleased with Mary Poppins when he had heard about the children's recent adventure. Really, Mary Poppins? The children's outings should be practical, educational. And Mary Poppins agreed. I quite see your point, Mr. Banks. Tomorrow the children shall be at your side. Bright and early the next morning, the children set off for the bank with their father. Michael had brought some coins with him to buy food for the birds, but Mr. Banks wouldn't hear of that. You must put your money in the bank where it will earn your interest. Give it to me. Then, all of a sudden, the outing with their father lost all its promise of fun, and Jane and Michael let go of his hands. They ran off and got themselves lost. It was a good thing they ran into me. That day it suited me to be a chimney sweep, and the children were happy to see me. But they were all, but they were still upset. Oh, Bert, father tried to take Michael's money. He doesn't like us at all. I put a stop to that kind of talk. Your father loves you very much. It seems I feel sorry for. There he is all day in that cold, heartless bank, and nothing to keep him company but money. That made them think twice. Jane and Michael decided to apologize. Come along then, I said. It's my day to clean your chimney. I'll take you home. But before I could even get started on their chimney, Mary Poppins had a surprise for us. In a twinkling, she whisked us all up the chimney and out onto the rooftop. We gazed out over the rooftops of London. What a beauty, a beautiful sight, said I. And who gets to see it from up here for the bird, but the birds, the stars and the chimney sweeps? We danced and sang, had a regular party. When you're with Mary Poppins, the most magical things seem to happen. Jane and Michael felt much better after the party on the rooftop, and they went straight to their father. Michael offered him his coins to put in the bank. Mr. Banks smiled. Keep your money, Michael. I was only doing what I thought best of you, best for you. But now I see that money isn't that important. 
It's having fun that counts at your age. And from now on, I'm going to spend a lot of more time with you both. And Mr. Banks give the, gave the children a hug and went off to make them a kite. Then the whole Banks family went to the park together for the first time in ever so long. They flew their kite and had a grand time. The wind changed and everyone wanted to fly a kite. I was the only one who noticed Mary Poppins sailing away on the east on the west wind. Goodbye, Mary Poppins, I waved. Don't stay away too long. The end. Mm.